So did we do the proofs okay? Three, B, C. Oh. We did A. For some people, A is the hardest one. So we don't need to go over A. That's what I thought. And since we're videoing it, I'll, I'll just do it. 3A. So you got 1 minus cosine x all over sine x. And then sine x, 1 plus cosine x. See, now this one's tough because you can't change everything to sine and cosine because it is a raise, right? And then, you, and if you don't know what to do, you kind of stuck there, right? Well, there's four things you can do. You can either multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of this, which is 1 plus cosine x. You can do that. How many people did that? Why is multiplying by the conjugate so important? Because then you get 1 minus cosine squared x, and then they use a body, right? Or you can multiply top and bottom by sine x. Right? Because sine squared x, there's an identity for that, right? Which is 1 minus cosine squared x. Or you can multiply top and bottom on this side by sine x or the conjugate of the denominator, 1 minus cosine x. So there's four things you can do. And if you just do one of them, it comes right out. It's like eating oatmeal. Okay, so which one do you want to do? Pick one of the four. Multiply by the conjugate. Okay. Remember this technique now. This comes up a lot in calculus where you multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. Okay, so if you do that, you get 1 minus cosine squared x on the top. And the bottom, you have this. And then, like I said, hey, you somebody, yeah? 1 minus cosine squared. That's sine squared. And then, can I cancel this sine with one of the signs on the top? You bet you're dipping you again. And so you got sine x all over 1 plus cosine x. Left side is the same as the right side. Quite easily done. <laughs> so you got to remember this technique. Who, who knows? You might see it tomorrow. So if you get stuck, multiply by conjugate, because maybe something good might happen. OK. Next proof. OK, so B, you got 10x plus cotan x. Now, you got to remember, when you do proofs, there's an infinite number of ways of doing them. All you do, just make sure you do them correctly. You should be OK. So yours could be nice and short, or yours could be really long, but as long as it's correct, it's fine. OK, what do you want to do? Change everything to sine and cosine, like weak leans. OK, we just use OK, change everything to sine and cosine. That's, you don't automatically have to do that. You just do that when you get stuck. Well, I'm stuck at the beginning on every problem, Mr. Park. OK, I guess do that to him. Change everything to sine and cosine. Whole types or just the left side? Well, I'll convert cosine to the 4 times sine, no, cosine squared over sine squared. So shall we cancel and just get 1 over cosine squared sine squared then? Okay. So what you want to do is you got to lomi lomi this until you get that over there. So what do you want to do? You want to square it first or you want to make a least common denominator first? What do you want to do? You gotta do something. You get to see some of you just stare. Some of you don't even some of you don't even stare. You don't even look at the problem until now. So what do you want to do? Pick something. Square it now or make the least common denominator first. Quinto. Wrong! Nah, you, you can't do it. You know, why did you pick square first? You sure? I would, I would make the least common denominator first. No, but it's up to you. You want <laughs> Okay, let's make the least common denominator first. Cosine x, sine x squared. So what goes on the top? Sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Hey, you somebody, huh? You somebody! Okay, if we don't know even down, we're in trouble. <laughs> That's one! Okay, let's just make the next step already. Ah! And then what happens when you square a fraction? You've got to square both the top and the bottom. So you get 1 over cosine squared x 
sine squared x. So oh, the left side is the same as the right side. Quite easily done. But see, the thing is, you've got to do something. Some of you are not even doing something. That's the problem. Because if you just leave it blank on the, on the quiz and test, I have no choice, right? I have no choice. going to be mind this fatal error. At least change everything to sines and cosines. That's the minimum you should do. Maybe, maybe on a good day, you might get one point. On a bad day, there's nothing. You've got to at least do some algebra. And then C. Anyway, tonight's one, you get, every worksheet, you're going to have practice ones to do. Sine cubed x plus what are, you, what are you thinking when you see this? Sine cubed plus cosine cubed. I'm going to write it on the board tomorrow. Sum of cubes. Yeah, that's a sum of cubes. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm going to write them on the board tomorrow. Secant x minus sine x all over tangent x minus 1. Okay, so what do you guys want to do? Factor the sum of cubes and then change down to all sines and cosines? That would probably be a good strategy, right? Okay, how do you factor a sum of cubes? Everybody looking down. Oh, sum of cubes. Um, sine minus <laughs> plus cosine. I'm not going to be there going, eh. Times sine squared minus sine cosine plus cosine Okay, that is correct. And then, hey, you somebody, huh? No, sine squared plus cosine squared. You somebody. Okay, and then the right side, we're going to change everything to sines and cosines. I guess we're just going to do the baby way every time then, right? <laughs> and then simplify. Multiply top and bottom by cosine. So you're going to have 1 minus sine cosine times sine x minus cosine x. It's starting to take shape. Can you see it's starting to take shape? It's a lie. Because look, okay, here, you got sine x plus cosine x. And then, like I said, you somebody, uh, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 minus sine x cosine x. Because look, at least you got this and this being the same now. All we have to do is somehow low me, low me this thing. So what am I going to do with that? What do I do? You got to do something. Because look, get both sine and cosine in the bottom. So somehow, somehow something got to be canceled out. Okay, there you go. You, you change the one into cosine squared plus sine squared. Why do you do that? Why do I do that? Okay, I'll tell you why you do that. Because now you have sine squared x minus cosine squared x. Hey, that's a difference of squares, which can be factored. Can you see it already? Some of you have, uh, you guys have foresight? No, but I can copy off the board with. <laughs> So that's a difference of, guys are shameless. That's not going to help you, you know. I mean, how many times will you even check homework a year? Once a quarter. You will get the, you probably going to get the 100 points, 100% of the homework. But you got to learn. And then, once you factor this as a difference of squares, oh, these cancel out. And then you get this, A. That's the same as the right side. So the left side is the same as the right side. Quite. Easily done. I'm sure that's not the only way to do this problem, but that's the way we did it now. As long as you use correct mathematics, as long as your left side comes up to the right side, there's full credit. Anyway, tomorrow there is a proof. But then on the test, the test could be next, is it next week already? No proof. Now you may be thinking, oh good, but you're going to have a proof-like problem though. It's going to be like a proof, but not really. You'll find out as we go. Okay, so that takes care of the proofs, and then tonight you get three more, yeah, probably. Forget that. Okay, solving equations. This is the meat of the test right here. Okay, what do we got up here? Four, 
Oh, not that many. You guys are good. Until I start. Okay, so four. What's the first one? B? <coughs> A sine to the fourth x plus 10 cosine squared x equals 7. So either you're going to change everything to sine or everything to cosine. What do you want to do? Sine. Change this to sine squared squared. Or you want to just replace this with 1 minus sine squared? Isn't that, wouldn't, wouldn't that be easier if you replace this with 1 minus sine squared? Okay, now this is what I do. I let s equal sine x and do the s sub. You can do u substitution, but I just do s sub. So you get 8s to the 4 plus 10 minus 10s squared equals 7. I mean, it's, it's the same thing. You know, I, I just like right to write s for sine, c for cosine, and t for tangent. But if you want to do u, you can do u. And does this have quadratic form? Yeah, so you can factor it like a quadratic. So you get, what is this going to be? Let's try 4 and 2 first. 4s squared, 2s squared, 3 and 1. No! 3 and 1 minus, minus, minus 4, minus 6. There you go. So, sine squared x is e either equal to 3 fourths or 1 half. Square root both sides, and then you get plus or minus. Don't forget to put the plus minus now. And then plus or minus, what's the square root of 1 half? 1 over root 2. Hey, these are numbers we're supposed to know. Yes, if you get things that are not numbers you're supposed to know, you're doing something wrong, because this is a no-calculator test. So. If it's sine and cosine, it better come out to root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2, and 1 half, and zeros and 1s. Otherwise, you can't do it. And then once you get here, you just got to know, right? Sine of one angle is plus or minus root 3 over 2. Dunk, dunk, right? Sine of one angle is plus or minus 1 over root 2. Dunk, dunk. So there's going to be eight answers. And then once you get to here, I'm not going to write the answers again. You got them on the bottom here. Okay, C. We have tangent squared x equals secant x plus 1. Now, do you want to work with the tangents and secants, or do you want to whip out and change everything to sines and cosines? Work with tangents and secants. Yeah. What? Okay. <laughs> so, there's really only, okay, so, you, there's no identity for that, but there's an identity for tangent squared. What's the identity for tangent squared? Secant squared plus 1. Secant squared minus 1? Or 1 minus secant squared? Is that angle? Since you're looking like you were thinking. I don't know if that's just pretending a lot, but. So what's the identity for tangent squared? Secant squared minus 1, there you go. See, you got to know, you know. So secant squared x. This is quadratic, so make one side zero. And then does this factor? Yeah, it has to. If yours doesn't factor, you're doing something wrong. It has to factor. You guys understand why it has to factor? Because how else are you going to come out with root 3 over 2 and root 2 over 2 and 1 half? This has got to factor. So secant x is equal to 2 or negative 1. Now, if you really hate secant, then change everything to cosines then. Secant x equals 2 means the same thing as cosine x equals 1 half. You just reciprocatize both sides, right? And the reciprocal of negative 1 is still negative 1. Do that if you, I mean, if you must. So cosine of what angle is a half here? This is what you're thinking in your brain. Cosine of what angle is a half? Cosine of what angle is negative 1? So pi over 3, pi, pi, pi over 3, right? That's why if you know your unit circle, this is not that hard, you know. But if you don't know your unit circle, then this is like practically impossible. That's why we have the speed quiz, people. Okay, so C, and then F. Oh, I gave you the hint too. Go to your room. Root 3 now, after today, not going to have hint, you know. Why? Why do we square both sides? Because of the radical 3. No, it's not because of the radical 3. Although some people think it is. It's no. It's because we don't have identities for sine and cosine. 
but we do have identities for sine squared and cosine squared. That's why we square both sides. Okay, but you gotta remember, what happens when you square both sides? You gotta check your answers, because you might have extraneous solutions. So that's the only drawback of squaring both sides, you gotta check. Okay, so, now remember, when you square both sides, you gotta square the whole side now. You can't just pick the ones you want, like distribute the square like some people do. So you get three cosine squared x is equal to one minus two sine x plus sine squared x. You gotta square the whole side, the quantity. You just don't square term by term. Every year I see one in one or two people do that. And then now what? Should I change everything to sines or everything to cosine? Do I replace this with one minus cosine squared or do I replace that with one minus sine squared? Yeah, why? Why do I replace this with one minus sine squared? Because you have a sign here. You want to make everything all one function, if possible, right? So, 3 minus 3 sine squared x equal 1 minus 2 sine x plus sine squared x. Make one side 0, 4 sine squared minus 2 sine minus 2. See how I let s equal sine x? Okay, divide by 2, make the number smaller, that would be good. And then does this factor? It has to! So sine x equals either negative half or 1. And are these numbers we're supposed to know? Yeah, all! Which means yes. So sine of what angle is negative half? Kutuka, kutuka. Sine of what angle is 1? Kutuka. So what is that? That's pi over 2, 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. Box that, those are the answers. No, we gotta check. So you have to take each of these and plug it back into the original. Because this is what some of you do, I know you're doing it. Okay, what is this, F? The answers are pi over two and 11 pi over six. So gotta cross out this one then, because <laughs> it's not there. That's what you guys are gonna do, but what's gonna happen on the quiz and test? You guys are gonna get points taken off because you don't practice checking. Okay, let's try first. Plug in pi over 2 into the original now. Plug pi over 2 into the original. Root 3 times, see, this is why you've got to know your trig values. Cosine pi over 2 is 0 equals 1 minus sine of pi over 2, which is 1. Is that true? Wait, let me think. 0 equals 0. Do you have a calculator? Okay, plug in 7 pi over 6 now. Root 3 times negative root 3 over 2 is equal to 1 minus sine of 7 pi over 6 which is negative half. Is that true? Negative 3 halves equals positive 3 halves. Give me my calculator again. No, that's why you cross it out. Now plug in 11 pi over 6. Root 3 times cosine of this is root 3 over 2 is equal to 1 minus sine of the, which is negative half. Is that true? Is 3 halves equal to 3 halves? Wait, let me cross multiply. 6 equals 6. Yes. <laughs> why is it sad? So yeah, you guys know why you gotta check? Because you square both sides. I still don't get it. Why do we have to? I showed you guys this. Is this true? Negative two equals two. Is that true? We gotta think about that. But what happens when you square both sides? You get four equal four. That's why you gotta check. And then number five. Are you sure that's the only? Are you, Sure, you guys did your homework. Find the y-intercept of the line with inclination of 150 degrees that contains the point root three comma one. What are the two things you need to write an equation of a line? You need a point, which I gave you, and the slope. Now I didn't tell you what the slope was, but it says the inclination of a line is the angle that the line makes with the positive x-axis. So, if this is the positive x-axis over here, what does the line of, with an inclination of 150 degrees look like? It looks like that, right? This is 150 degrees. You always measure it counterclockwise, right? That's the positive direction. So, if you know the inclination of a line is 150 degrees, then is there a way to figure out the slope? Yes! There's lots of ways. Here, I'll show you the easiest. How about just take a right triangle here? If that's 150, this is 30. Hey, it's a 30-69 triangle. 
And in a 30-60-90 triangle, if the hypotenuse is 2, then what's the short leg? 1, and wouldn't this be root 3? So what's the slope of this line? What's rise over run? What's the slope of this line? Karaoka. No! Negative 1 over root 3. How come? Because it's going downhill. If the line goes downhill, it has negative slope. Uphill is positive slope. Anyway, I wanted you to discover something in this problem. But then you guys are just doing it now, so it's hard to discover anything. Yeah? What is the relationship between this angle, the angle of inclination, and the slope? There's a relationship between the two. The tangent of this angle is the slope. Isn't the tangent of 150 degrees negative 1 over root 3? Yeah, that's what I wanted you to discover in this problem, but it didn't work. You thwarted me again. <laughs> so anytime I give you an inclination, just tangent it, and that's the slope. Why does that work, Mr. Park? Because when you compute the tangent of this angle, isn't it, remember Sokatoa, isn't tangent opposite over adjacent? Which is rise over run, that's why it works. Okay, anyway, now that we have the point and the slope, what's the fastest way to write an equation of a line? Point slope form. Y minus 1 equal negative 1 over root 3 times x minus root 3, right? This is the equation of the line. Okay, but I, I'm not asking for the equation of the line. I'm asking for the y-intercept of the line. How do you find the y-intercept of any graph? Plug in 0 for x is I'll solve for y. So if I plug in 0 for x right here, what does y come out to? y comes out to distribute this negative 1 over root 3. Distribute. Oh, how much is multiplied it? It rhymes with bun. One. one. And then you add the one there, it comes up to two. So the y-intercept is two. Write the equation of the line first, and then answer the question. You need a point and a slope. You know, the concept of a line is central for calculus next year. You, go, you show up to calculus in the first day of school, you better know how to write an equation of a line, right? We've been doing that since algebra one. But now we know. Because in Algebra 1, your teachers probably told you to always do y equal mx plus b, but now we know that's the baby way, right? Just do point slope form every single time. Okay, any other last questions on this that I'm not aware of? If you'd like h, h is a good one. Do you notice I had four trig functions in that, in that equation? I'm trying to work on one where I get all six trig functions in one equation. It's going to be fun too. But it's kind of hard to make it come out nice, though. Okay, no question? No question? Il y a beaucoup à faire. Oh, by the way, what, the, you know the French guy, what did you think about my French? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I should have asked him. Okay, we are done. And then 4A, everybody knows you've got to go two times around, right? I'll give you a hint, you better know that tomorrow, man. So if it's 3x, you got to go three times around. 4x, four times around. 5x, five times around. x over 2, half times around. Okay, we're done. So there's no lecture anymore. So if you look at the next worksheet, it's just the same thing. We have to practice getting good at this. Can I see the next one? Trig 8, trig 2, who has it? Trig 8, 3. Not trig 3. So there's a graphing problem, proofs, and then solving equations. See, same, same thing, trigger four. Stop calling it trigger. <laughs> now I'm not sure what we're gonna do now. I, I, I'm not sure. Is there a trig A5? Or trig? Or yeah, trig A4 stuff. Okay, now, after we finish trig A4, I don't know if we're gonna take a test on that or we're going to combine trig A and trig B into just one test. But, but we're going to have something, might be a, we might have a maxi quiz or, a, or an ultra maxi quiz. I don't know, just stand by. Okay, we're done for today. You have 10 minutes remaining.